A reading from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope in the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all inquiety and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life. Who would like to join me for a children's moment up here? Come on up, everyone. Come on up. Anyone from out there? Come on, join us. There's plenty of room up here. Yeah, I know. Tomorrow is Jesus' birthday. It's brilliant, isn't it? Hey, where have we been headed? All through Lent. Remember, we've been on this journey. Where are we going? Where are we going? Jesus' house. In the town of Bethlehem, right? All right. Who remembers this guy? John the Baptizer. Where was he? He was way out in the wilderness, right? Here, let's let's put him down here. Where? Here, I've got some sheep. Maybe those go on the way. You want to put one? No, not there. No, we got to save that spot for for someone special. Yeah. Here, let's put the sheep down here. Here, you want to put one up? Here's a shepherd. Here, put him right next to the sheep. Okay. Oh, here, I got an angel. Where do you think angels go, you guys? Where do the angels go? Up in the sky. All right. Yeah, announcing good news of great joy for all people. Oh, I got a donkey. Hold on, hold on. Let's do someone who hasn't done one yet. Here, you put one up. Where does the donkey go? Maybe by the shepherd. Here, let's put him upright. How about that? Yeah. Here, let's do... Boom. Oh, perfect. Oh, the star. We're following the star, right, that appeared in the sky. Where does it go? Way up here. There it is. Leading the way. Now there's some people who are following that star. We haven't really heard their story yet. Yeah, we're going to hear about them next week. These are the Magi. Where do you think the Magi go? They're still kind of far off. Maybe down here? No, no. Let's do one here. And then a, a camel. They're with the Magi. And then here's another Magi. I think there's three of them. One, two, three. Magi on the way. Uh oh. Uh oh. I've only got I've only got three left. Uh oh. I've got Joseph. 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 Where do you think he goes? He's probably pretty close to up here. Joseph. Okay. And then uh, Mary. Yeah, Mary thinks she goes up here too. No, they could be 
Right by each other. Right by each other? Okay, all right, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then who, who are we waiting for? Who have we been waiting for this whole Jesus. season? Jesus! Brilliant! Jesus. Jesus. Where do you think he goes? Up here. Right here? Right here? Closer? Yeah, no. A little more? A little more? A little more? Here, let's put him right by Mary. No. Let's maybe put him like, yeah. Here, right there, right by Bethlehem. Yeah. It's Christmas, you guys. It's Christmas. No, we're good, we're good. We don't need to touch it. We got it here. Yeah, we got all these spaces. Because as we get, you know, here, let's move. Maybe the donkey needs to get a little closer. Maybe a sheep's on the way. Shepherd's moving. Move one more. All right. All right. We'll leave them back there, though. They're still, they're still, they won't you show up. Well, okay, whatever. All right. All right. All right, we're good. All right. Back to your families. Thank you. Thank you. The first gospel reading is the reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor of Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Crenarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and a family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And while she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Word of God, word of life. Gospel reading. It's a reading of the Gospel from Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be the sign for you you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart and pondered them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good evening, dear people, and Merry Christmas. I will say there's nothing quite like the enchantment that nights like this one bring. Candles along roadways as the sun will soon be setting and set in windows and homes. Trees lit and carols darting in and out of hallways and church sanctuaries. Not to mention the persistent anticipation of many of us wondering what lies behind the wrappings of those treasures underneath our Christmas trees at home. I can still remember the holy electricity of Christmas Eve at church as a kid with the brass up in the balcony behind us and the waxy aroma of the candles and the roaring chatter of the gathering friends and families, each searching for their pew right in the midst of an already impossibly packed sanctuary. There always seemed to be this grandness about it all. This movement of the night, like something wonderful was happening. And of course, something wonderful was happening and is happening now. Through rites and ritual, through song and anthem, through the gift of gathered community on this Christmas celebration, we are learning together how to be part of God's movement of divine love that is breaking into our world through Christ. Now, it would be easy to mistake this sort of divine love as simply a meek and mild tenderness, right? Gentle as infant Christ's breath upon us. And perhaps some moments, that's exactly what it is. But more often than not, I think the love that God is bringing into our world is a fierce love that makes some demands upon us then that will accomplish exactly what it sets out to do. For the divine love found in the breath of infant Jesus on nights like tonight is the same love that breathed over the primordial waters of the earth, calling forth the wondrous diversity of all things living. The divine love found in the breath of infant Jesus on nights like tonight. It's the same love that breathed into the dust of the earth, right? That called humans into existence from soil. The divine love found in the breath of infant Jesus on nights like tonight is the same love that sang the cosmos into existence and that vocalized the persistent songs of Elizabeth and Mary as they prepared for divinity in their lives. And it's the same breath that vocalizes our songs as we prepare for divinity to arrive in our lives as well. And yet, the divine love found in the breath of Jesus on nights like tonight is also the same breath that breathed threats against all tyrants like Herod and others. It's the same breath that breathed against all whose abusive ways would smother us when we're vulnerable. 
the divine love found in the breath of infant Jesus on nights like tonight is this very thing that is bridging the gap between the world as it has been and the world as God is creating it to be. Cutting out any distance between, between secular and sacred, cutting out any distance between material and spiritual, and it testifies for us how deeply our God is committed to a holy sort of rearrangement in our lives and world. So that light might emerge in our deepest darknesses. Martha Spong, a pastor and theologian in the United Church of Christ tradition, reminds us in a recent Christian century publication that the arrival of infant lives amongst us always have a way of rearranging our priorities, right? They have a way of rearranging things that we might together learn what it means to be stewards of this new life that finds us. For just as newfound parents are jolted into a harsh reality, forced to rearrange plans and schedules, usually in the wee hours of the night, am I right? So too are those around them jolted into realities with priorities rearranged. Family members and friends make visits as they are able. Perhaps a a baptism date is set and many come then to hold in their arms the wonder of the holy mystery of what has come to be. And the same is true with the arrival of Jesus in our midst. For as Jesus arrives, even as an infant, we are together wrapped into the responsibility of caring for this coming movement of justice-seeking, life-giving love that is growing in our world. As infant Jesus arrives, we have placed upon us the yoke, right, of of being part of making things right in the world the way God is making things right in the world. And as Jesus arrives, even as an infant, we also look beyond all those things, the work upon us towards the place where the most profound and surprising divine presence has been made known. In the midst of an execution, under the suffocating arm of empires and systems that were threatened by a man whose way simply called for reorienting love. And so indeed on nights like tonight, amidst all the enchantment, we remember. We remember both the joy and the call of divine love come into the world. For indeed it is this sort of love that is making all things, even death, new. Love has come, dear people. It is Christmas. And the way of Christ has only just begun. So let us join with Elizabeth and Mary and all those of countless generations before who have praised this one whose light breaks all of our darknesses. Merry Christmas, dear people. And know that you are loved. Amen. Amen. Amen.